Welcome, welcome, welcome to Chemistry. I'm Miss Lisa, and this is my YouTube channel where I teach science and math, and this is Chemistry, this this week's Chemistry. This class is designed primarily, I just hit the cord, sorry about that, primarily for homeschoolers. We're going through this book, Addison Wesley Chemistry, but um, anybody who likes to explain the topics, you are welcome, welcome, welcome to join us. And what we're gonna talk about now is some of the basic ideas of math for chemistry, and um, so, and basically just how to do math in general for um, when, when it's word problems. So, uh, when you have a word problem, why do we hate word problems? What makes word problems hard? It's the words. It's not the math. The math is just regular old math. It's just you read those words and you think, I don't know what to do. So, I'm going to help you. What you need to do is as you read a word problem, you skip along until it's a number and or a question. And then you write down the number with its units. You label what it is. and Or if it's a question word, you write down what they're asking for. I am so enthusiastic that I have done math before and just happily went off doing it and ended up solving a problem, but not the problem they asked for. I even did it right, but it wasn't what they asked for. I just went and solved something else because I didn't read the problem carefully and write down the knowns and unknowns. Then you write a formula if you have one. Then you sing a song, substitute, it's by the who, it's before my time and yours. That's the song we sing to remind us to substitute. And then we solve for our unknown variable by doing the opposite. And what you do to one side, you can do to the other in algebra. Now, that was fast, so let's do, we're gonna do eight problems to uh, learn how to do this. So if you got your book, Follow along. Oh, my hair's looking a little crazy there. Um, follow along, turning your book to page 62. And the first problem we're going to do, that's a physics problem. We're not going to do that one. Um, we're going to do is on uh, um, density. Okay, so I'm going to read the words, and then we're going to talk about what we write down and what we don't. I remember word problems being hard when I was a kid, too. So don't feel bad. It gets easier the more you do. Um, all right, so we're going to read example problem number one. I know my eyes look very big with this on. Okay, it says, what is the volume? Okay, so the very first thing we have is a question. So we stop what we're doing, and we're going to write V question mark. Because what is the volume? We want to be sure that we're answering the question they ask. So we're going to write our knowns and unknowns, and volume is our unknown, because it had the question word with it. That's easy so far, isn't it? Now let's read a little bit more. Um, in cubic centimeters, so I'm going to write centimeters cubed next to my question there, of a sample of cough syrup. Do we care that it's cough syrup? Nope, not one bit. Um, that has a mass, oh, ding, 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 we're being given another thing that's important. So I write M equals 50 grams. So I put 50 grams, I wrote that down. Ta -da! See how we're getting rid of all the words and we're getting it to be just math? The density of cough syrup, so I'm going to need that, D equals 0 0.950 grams per cubic centimeter. So now I have listed my knowns and unknowns, and now I think, hmm, is there a formula that relates volume, mass, and density? Yes, there is. Density is mass over volume. So I'm going to write this over here. Density equals mass over volume. And we don't ever rearrange our formulas. We just use them straight so we memorize them. And now we've written our formula. We've got our knowns and unknowns. We got rid of all those unnecessary words like cough syrup. And now we sing a song. Substitute. It's by the who. It's from before my time or yours. But that reminds us now to substitute it into the formula. So I write down where the D is right underneath it. I'm going to write 0 0.950. And then underneath M, right where it was, I'm going to write 50. And V is what I don't know, so I'll leave it as a letter. Because, you know, in algebra, it's like X or Y, but in chemistry, we'll leave it as the letter of what it is. Now, why is this all ugly? Because volume is in the denominator, and we want to get it out. 
We, so the first thing we're going to do is get it out of the denominator and how you move things in algebra is by doing the opposite. It's being divided into 50, so the opposite is multiply it over by 50 and on the other side. So now I'm multiplying it, and these V's, oops, cancel out. If you have one on top and one on bottom, they cross out. So now I bring down what I didn't mess with. So I've got V times 0 0.950 equals 50. And now I can ask myself the regular math question, why is V not alone? Because it's being multiplied by 0 0.950. What's the opposite of multiplying by point? Uh, 0 0.950, uh, dividing by that. So I'm going to divide this side by 0 0.950, and I'm allowed to do anything I want in math as long as I do it to both sides. So it's um, 0 0.950. These cancel out, and now I just do it on my calculator, 50 divided by that, and the answer is... Um, 52.632, and that'd be centimeters cubed. But that's too many decimal points. Our numbers up here only had like, were much smaller, so we're gonna round it instead to right there. The book rounded it to 52.6 cubic centimeters. All right, that wasn't so bad, was it? The next idea is conversion factors, converting between units. And a conversion factor are two things that are equal to each other. Like if you ever did a, a Becca stop, kaput, 12 inches in a foot. Did you do that in first grade? If you did a Becca and your teacher and your mom or your teacher used the teacher's edition, they taught the little kids that rhyme. Another one is there's three feet in a yard. There's a hundred centimeters in a meters. Those are all conversion factors. They're equal to the same thing. So you can multiply them times a number and not change its value. Because anything divided by itself is one, and anything times one is itself. If that did not make sense to you, that's okay. That's just the mathematical reasoning behind conversion factors. So in your book, they talk about how you can have a thousand grams equals a kilogram, or you could say a kilogram equals a thousand grams. You can put either one in the numerator or denominator. It doesn't matter. You can flip them as you need. So that'll make sense, more sense once we do a problem. So that's example two. Turn on in your book to example three, okay? And this is what the problem says. The directions of experiment ask each student to measure out 1.84 grams of copper. So, do we care that it's students? Do we care it's an experiment? No, those are all words. We don't really care so much about the words usually. We need to read them and make sure we have an understanding of what's going on. But what we care about is the numbers. And we were just told that each student needs 1.84 grams of copper per student. So I got rid of all those words except these numbers. I need 1.84 grams per student. And we are told that we got 50 grams. And we want to know how many people can do the lab. Well, if we got 50 grams and each kid takes 1.84, we're going to need to divide 50 grams divided by 1.84 grams per student and it equals 27.174. Can you have 0.174 of a kid? Nope. So that means 27 kids can do the lab. That's a lot. They don't even have to do lab partners. That's a lot of kids. Now, mathematically, how does this work out to be students? Let me show you. I'm going to write student up there. Okay, there's a rule in math. I call it the Jesus rule of math because Jesus said the first will be last and the last will be first. And uh, this student is in the denominator of the denominator. And mathematically, it seems to me that if you were in the denominator of the denominator, that's the last place. So if 
a number or anything is in the denominator of the denominator, it gets to move up to the numerator. The grams cancel out, whoop, it's more fun with sound effects, and you're left with students in the numerator. Now, uh, I can show you mathematically about why that works, but if you just remember as a little trick, if something's in the denominator of the denominator, it gets to move up to the numerator, it's great. It'll save you some steps. All right, so that's example uh, three. Uh, go on to example four, and it is a unit conversion factor. And it is metric. And this is why metric is great and why we should always use it for science. I think we should use the English or imperial system for our everyday life. Quartz, teaspoons, miles. I think it's all good. But I think for science, um, metric is way better. And this is why. King Henry's daughter bakes delicious chocolate muffins. What is this? This is how you can convert in the metric system without with it being really easy. This is kilo, hecto, deca, the basic unit like grams, meters, liters, um, then deci, centi, milli. These prefixes you add to the basic unit and you can change in between them. Let me show you how it works. Look on example number four. It says that we have 700 and 50 centigrams, and we want to know how many grams that is. We have 750 centigrams, and we want to go to grams. Well, what you do is you start on centi, and you see how many frog hops it takes to get to the basic unit where gram would be, and it takes two frog hops, one, two. So to change this into what it is, you just take the decimal point, let's see if I can lean over here and you see what I'm doing, and you move it the same number of places in the same direction, one, two. So the answer is 7.50 grams. So that is so easy. You just frog hop the direction that you go. And how you remember this is it's King Henry's daughter bakes delicious chocolate muffins. And when I imagine it, they're chocolate muffins with chocolate chips. Those are the good ones. And, I, and this is true confession here. I really like the ones where you get the box and you make them from Betty Crocker or whatever that is. I think they're better than my homemade ones. I make them homemade. They're not as good. I guess I just don't put enough fattening bad things in them. Because they end up tasting healthy instead of delicious. So you always, if you make them from scratch, you want it to be delicious. But I don't.